Data stream matching. Data matching is a problem without a clean solution. It occurs when a component has access to differently sized inputs. Imagine a component which creates line segments between points. It will have two input parameters which both supply point coordinates, stream A and stream B. It is irrelevant where these parameters collect their data from, a component cannot see beyond its in and output parameters. As you can see there are different ways in which we can draw lines between these sets of points. The Grasshopper plugin currently supports three matching algorithms but many more are possible. The simplest way is to connect the inputs one on one until one of the streams runs dry. This is called the shortest list algorithm. The longest list algorithm keeps connecting inputs until all streams run dry. This is the default behavior for components. Finally, the cross reference method makes all possible connections. This is potentially dangerous since the amount of output can be humongous. The problem becomes more intricate as more input parameters are involved and when the volatile data inheritance starts to multiply data, but the logic remains the same. Imagine we have a point component which inherits its x, y, and z values from remote parameters which contain the following data. x coordinate, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. y coordinate, 0, 2, 4, 8, 10, z coordinate, 0, 5. If we combine this data in the shortest list fashion, we get only two points since the z coordinate contains only two values. Since this is the shortest list it defines the extent of the solution. The longest list algorithm will create 10 points, recycling the highest possible values of the y and z streams. Cross reference will connect all values in x with all values in y and z thus resulting in 10 times 5 times 2 equals 100 points. Every component can be set to obey one of these rules. The setting is available in the menu by right-clicking the component icon. Note the one big exception to this behavior. Some components expect to get a list of data in one or more of their input fields. The polyline component, for example, creates a polyline curve through an array of input points. More points in the input parameter will result in a longer polyline, not in more polylines. Input parameters which are expected to yield more than one value are called list parameters and they are ignored during data matching. Scalar component types are typically used for various mathematical operations and consist of a constants returns a constant value such as pi, golden ratio, etc. b. Intervals used to divide numeric extremes, or domains, into interval parts. There are many components under the intervals tab that allow you to create or decompose a number of different interval types. c. Operators used in mathematical operations such as add, subtract, multiply, etc. d polynomials used to raise a numeric value by some power e trigonometry returns typical trigonometric values such as sine cosine and tangent etc f utility analysis used to evaluate of two or more numerical values operators as was previously mentioned operators are a set of components that use algebraic functions with two numeric input values which result in one output value. To further understand operators, we will create a simple math definition to explore the different operator component types. To create the definition from scratch, perm slash special slash numeric slider, drag and drop a numeric slider component to the canvas. Double click the slider to set lower limit 0.0, .0. upper limit 100.0, value 50.0, note, this value is arbitrary and can be modified to any value within the upper and lower limits. Select the slider and type Ctrl plus C, copy, and Ctrl plus V, paste, to create a duplicate slider. Perm slash primitive slash integer, drag and drop two integer components onto the canvas. Connect slider 1 to the first integer component. Connect slider 2 to the second integer component. The slider's default value type is set to floating point, which results in a decimal numeric value. By connecting the slider to the integer component, we can convert the floating point value to an integer, or any whole number. When we connect a post-it panel, perm slash special slash panel, to the output value of each integer component, we can see the conversion in real time. 
move the slider to the left and right and notice. The floating point value be converted to a whole number. Of course, we could have simplified this step by just setting the slider type to integers. Scalar slash operators slash add drag and drop an add component to the canvas. Connect the first integer component to the add A input. Connect the second integer component to the add B input. Perm slash special slash panel, drag and drop a posted panel to the canvas. Connect the add R output to the posted panel input. You can now see the summation value of the two integers in the posted panel. Drag and drop the other remaining scalar operators onto the canvas. Subtraction. Multiplication. Division. Modulus. Power. Connect the first integer component to each of the operator's A input value. Connect the second integer component to each of the operator's B input value. Drag and drop a five more posted panels onto the canvas and connect one panel to each operator's output value. The definition is complete and now when you change each of the slider's values you will see the result of each operator's action in the posted panel area. Conditional statements. You probably noticed that there were a few components under the operator's subcategory of the scalar tab that we didn't cover in the last section. That's because there are four components, new to version 0.6.0007, that act somewhat differently than the mathematical operators, in that, they compare two lists of data instead of performing an algebraic expression. The four components are equality, similarity, larger than, and smaller than and are explained in further detail below. A, equality component takes two lists and compares the first item of list A and compares it to the first item of list B. If the two values are the same, then a true boolean value is created. Conversely if the two values are not equal, then a false boolean value is created. The component cycles through the lists according to the set data matching algorithm. Default is set to longest list. There are two outputs for this component. The first returns a list of boolean values that shows which of the values in the list were equal to one another. The second output returns a list that shows which values were not equal to one another or a list that is inverted from the first output. B. Similarity component evaluates two lists of data and tests for similarity between two numbers. It is almost identical to the way the equality component compares the two lists, with one exception in that it has a percentage input that defines the ratio of list A that list B is allowed to deviate before inequality is assumed. The similarity component also has an output that determines the absolute value distance between the two input lists. C. Larger than component will take two lists of data and determine if the first item of list A is greater than the first item of list B. The two outputs allows you determine if you would like to evaluate the two lists according to a greater than or greater than and equal to equals condition. D. Smaller than component performs the opposite action of the larger than component. The smaller than component if list A is less than list B and returns a list of boolean. The range, series, and interval components all create a set of values between two numeric extremes however the components operate in different ways. The range component creates a list of evenly spaced numbers between a low and a high value called the domain of numeric range. In the example above, two numeric sliders are connected to the input values of the range component. The first slider defines the numeric domain for the range of values. In this example, the domain has been defined from 0 to 1, since the slider is set to 1. The second slider defines the number of steps to divide the domain, which in this case has been set to 10. Thus, the output is a list of 11 numbers evenly divided between 0 and 1. Note, the second slider, set to 10, is defining the number of divisions between 0 and 1, which ultimately creates 11 numbers, not 10. The series component creates a set of discrete numbers based on a start value, step size, and the number of values in the series. The series example shows three numeric sliders connected to the series component. The first slider, when connected to the series S input, defines the starting point for the series of numbers. The second slider, set to 10, defines the step value for the series. Since the start value has been set to 1 and the step size has been set to 10, 10, the next value in the series will be 11. Finally, the third slider defines the number of values in the series. Since this value has also been set to 10, the final output values defined in the series shows 10 numbers that start at 1 and increase by 10 at each step.
functions and booleans. Almost every programming language has a method for evaluating conditional statements. In most cases the programmer creates a piece of code to ask a simple question of what if. What if the 9-11 terrorist attacks had never happened? What if gas cost $10 slash gallon? These are important questions that represent a higher level of abstract thought. Computer programs also have the ability to analyze what if questions and take actions depending on the answer to the question. Let's take a look at a very simple conditional statement that a program might interpret. If the object is a curve, delete it. The piece of code first looks at an object and determines a single boolean value for whether or not it is a curve. There is no middle ground. The boolean value is true if the object is a curve or false if the object is not a curve. The second part of the statement performs an action dependent on the outcome of the conditional statement. In this case, if the object is a curve, then delete it. This conditional statement is called an if slash else statement. If the object meets certain criteria, do something else, do something else. Grasshopper has the same ability to analyze conditional statements through the use of function components. Trigonometric curves. We have already shown that we can use function components to evaluate complex formulas to create spirals and other mathematical curves. However, Grasshopper also has a set of trigonometric components built into the scalar component family. Trigonometric functions, like sine, cosine, and tangent are important tools for mathematicians, scientists, and engineers because they define a ratio between two sides of a right triangle containing a specific angle, called theta. These functions are important in vector analysis, which we will cover in later chapters. However, we can also use these functions to define periodic phenomena, like sinusoidal wave functions, often found in nature in the form of ocean waves, sound waves, and light waves. In 1822, Joseph Fourier, a French mathematician, discovered that sinusoidal waves can be used as simple building blocks to make up and describe nearly any periodic wave form. The process is called Fourier analysis. In the following example, we will create a sinusoidal wave form where the number of points on the curve, the wavelength frequency, and amplitude can be controlled by a set of numeric sliders.